Hello, my name's Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Trillium on Portainer. So, a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, you're installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse, so go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So... Let's get back to your registered programming. So uh, this is what I'll be installing today, Trillium. Uh, you can build a personal knowledge base with Trillium notes. Um, this is what it looks like. And then um, this is the features. You can have a mind map and uh, relational maps and uh, relational notes and different things like that. So it's really neat. And you can have a deep tree of them. Um, so that's what will be installed today. So I'm going to start on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to go to the search, top, type Trill. And then I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to click on the one that's how to install Trillium on Portainer right here. So I'm going to click it. And then I'm going to go to the Docker Compose. So version three of Docker Compose file format's being used. I'm going to set services. And the first service underneath the services is called Trillium. And um, then the container name is going to be called Big Bear Trillium. And then the image is coming off of Docker Hub by default because there's no year before this. And this is the Docker image. This is the Docker image tag. Restart policy is unless stop. So that means if you stop it for a reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then um, environment variable is Trillium da data directory. And then it's home node uh, tr uh, Trillium data. And then I'm going to set a volume, so Trillium data, that is a local volume uh, that's defined down here. So on the container side is home node Trillium data, and that rhymes with this path up here. And um, why we're using the container path in the environment variable right here is because the container knows nothing about the host path. It only knows about the container path. So... Now, I'm going to set a port map for 8080 on the host and 8080 on the container. If this does collide with another port on your host, you can change it. So, um, this is where I define the volume. So, I'm going to go over here to copy raw file. Then, I'm going to go over to my portainer and get this setup installed. So, I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So, uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So, let's get back to registered programming. So, now I'm going to start on my portainer. I'm going to go to local and then stacks and then add stack up here. I'm going to change um, this uh, stack name to Trillium Stack. And then um, portainer stacks are using Docker Compose underneath. So this is using the Docker engine. Um, so I'm going to go to the web editor right here. I'm going to paste in the Docker Compose uh, that I explained over in Bigger Video Assets. And then now I'm going to come down here to deploy the stack. And what this is doing underneath is it's uh, downloading the Docker image, um, getting it extracted, and getting it up with Docker Compose underneath. And then it's also setting up the volumes and the um, a network. So we got it up and running. So I'm going to go over the stack options. So um, I'm going to go in the stack. So you can see actions up here. So stop the stack, delete the stack, and then create template from the stack. You can also stack duplication slash migration. You can see the containers that are running in the stack down here. You can see the access controls. You can go up here to the editor and you can edit the Docker Compose. And then once you're done editing the Docker Compose, you can uh, click the update button. Um, you, you have the choice of repulling the image and re, or redeploying it. That means it's going to repull the image off the registry and then it's going to redeploy it. This is great for when you have a static tag like a latest or something. So um, I'm going to cancel. So. Um, that's a little bit about the stack options in Portainer. So now I'm going to go over the container options. So you're going to go in the container right here. 
Uh, you can see actions up here. So start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate slash edit. You can also see container status. You can see logs, inspect, stats, console, and attach. Logs are great for debugging. Um, you can see access controls and then the container health and then create image, um, container details like the image and then port configuration, the host and the cont container. You can see command and then the entry point and then environment variables, the labels, and then you can also change the restart policy here. So, and then once you've changed it, you can just press the update button. You can also see the volumes, uh, and then you can see the connected networks now that it created. So that's a little bit about the container options in Portainer. So now in my browser, I'm going to go to the IP and then the port. If you did change the host port, you would need to change it right here. So I'm going to go to it. So now you have three options. You can start as a new user or you, if you have a desktop instance already, you can sync with it. If you have a server instance already, you can sync with that. I'm going to just go with the new user right here. So I'm going to next. So now you're going to put a password in. So I'm going to put a password in. So you put your password in, then you confirm your password, and then you press set password. You will need to remember this password because you need to put it in right now to sign in. So now once you type it in, you can choose if you want to remember it. Um, so a log in. So. Now you see the notes over here. Uh, there's a tree list of them. You can put a PDF in it and the books to read. And then here you go. There's already, uh, there's already different examples. And then um, you can also create a new note. So you can put a title on it and then content. Um, and then you can see it down here. And then it dates it. Um, you can search for the notes. You can also jump to a note. So I want to jump to testing note. You can see it creates tabs up here, so you can go back to a note really quick. Um, yeah, uh, you have options up here. You can see the note revisions. You can also see more actions over here. Um, you, you can uh, go, go to a note map, so you can have like a mind map. There we go. Then you can go into the note. It's really neat and you can see a calendar over here you can go to the a date of when the note was created there you go you can see the recent changes you can open up today's notes you can edit uh, you can enter a protected session you can hide this panel so you can have more space to work with you can also go to the menu up here you can go to the options um, you can uh, switch to mobile version, c configure la launch bar, show shared a note subtree, advanced, show help, about, and log out. You can also have uh, options down here. So that's a little bit about Trillium's uh, UI. So I just went over step-by-step -step on getting Trillium running on Portainer. So if you, if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or you need community support, you can go out in the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.